Ireland. So yesterday we looked at what it takes to create an article from scratch and we touched upon um, a few elements of um, kind of structure and flow of articles and, and what makes um, an article more likely to be um, published onto Wikipedia. Um, and I touched on things like Wikidata and a few other bits and pieces that I suppose if you're looking to create a well-rounded or well-developed article, there's some extra functionality that you might want to include as an extra formatting to make your article just that little bit better. So we're going to explore that a little bit today. Um, and it's things like rather mundane things, um, like perhaps we might also look at um, info boxes in the future, but uh, for the moment I'm going to look at some, some things that you might be quite familiar with from just using um, uh, word processing. Uh, you know, like Word or, or any kind of um, other text-based um, application, just to kind of, I suppose, jazz up um, an article so that it isn't just blocks of text with your citations afterwards. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, different ways in which you can format lists or kind of blocks of information that don't flow just purely as a paragraph. Um, so today I'm going to look at, so this one, this is a, um, an article about uh, an Irish uh, actress, uh, Maureen Toll, uh, it's quite a short article and one of the things I've noticed that is missing is um, quite often if you look at other um, articles on actresses uh, you'll have what's referred to as selected or, or partial filmographies or playographies so um, plays and stage stage plays and films in which the actress uh, or actor was uh, played a part uh, and Maureen Tolls at the moment doesn't doesn't have that she has a little bit of detail um, kind of in this opening section here of some things that you um, that she was part of, some of the, the early works that she was part of. Um, but I wanted to add, I've noticed there's quite a nice uh, reference material online, which is Playography Ireland, which is a very good um, database uh, for finding um, information around plays, and specifically the first time plays were, were put on stage. And Maureen Toll, kind of being a stalwart of, of um, the Abbey and other theatres, um, she would have been part of some of the initial stagings of quite a number of well-regarded or well-known Irish plays. So I wanted to add some of that detail in here. So I've added my new section here. I have my partial playography, so I've, I've made that heading, heading text. And I've started adding um, on playography, when you look up um, an actress or, or equally a director or a writer, um, you get everything that they've, so you can see, quite a lot here and it's um, in alphabetical order um, but if you click into each one you'll get um, quite often as I mentioned Maureen was the part of the original cast and you'll get the, the date at which it was first staged so I've actually been putting them in chronological order uh, on her Wikipedia page rather than uh, alphabetical because uh, it kind of gives you a sense of progression of her of her career rather than just an assemblage of plays that, to which she is associated. So if we want to make this a bullet point list, it's very simple. I'm going to highlight um, the text that I have here at the moment. And beside your site button, you have, um, if you hover over it, it says structure. So I suppose it's adding uh, elements to your, to your Wikipedia um, article. You have the option of, of indenting. Uh, so sometimes if you are um, adding a quote, you might use indentation to make it kind of stand out. But like, in, uh, I don't know if... Um, it was quite a thing that we did, you know, I was doing my leaving search, if you're adding like a big long quote from uh, Macbeth or something like that, you might place it outside of the paragraph and indent it a little bit, uh, just to kind of put emphasis on the fact that you were adding quite a long quote. Um, so you can, you, there's numbered lists, this one probably better off being a bullet list. So I'm going to pop it as a bullet list and you can see quite nicely, a bit like Word, just automatically bullet points it for you. Um, because these are all names of plays, um, they're all titles of works, they should all be in italic. Um, and I'm pretty sure, no, it doesn't. Uh, I haven't, where is it, control? There is a shortcut for making things italic, and it's control I, it's actually telling me. There we go, so they want to speed it up a bit. Um, so I want to add, say, maybe one more, and um, I'll add one that's outside of, uh, I'll add the very last one there. <coughs> This is Yerma, to go completely outside of the alphabetical that I've been tied to up till now. Now, when was that first staged? 1987, so it will be the last one on the list. And you can see I've pressed enter automatically. If I want to get away from, um, you know, I want to maybe put a paragraph to that, this just press enter again and that goes away. I'll go back up and we bullet point to something like So Yerma, and that's 1987. Again. I. 
And most importantly, I'm going to state where I'm getting this information from. So I'm going to add my citation. So I'm going to grab the URL. I'm going to copy that. And at the end of the list, so I'm taking all this list all from the one source. So I place my citation right at the end of the list. Um, and I'm going to paste it in. And see how it generates a citation for me. Okay, so it has some issues with it. So we're going to fix up our citation. So we're going to say edit. So at the moment it has no title. Um, and of course the title of it is Maureen Toll. I'll grab her dates as well. We don't have an author um, for the list. So it's coming from a database, it's collated. Um, and we have the date that we've looked at. So we'll say apply changes. Excellent. So I'm going to save that. So that's as easy as it is, you know, it's, it's incredibly easy to add a bullet point list. Um, and it's really useful for um, playographies, filmographies, but equally for authors, lists of known works, um, for festivals, places that they've been held, um, for plays where they've been staged. So adding a bullet point list is quite useful for a variety of, of Wikipedia articles. So I'm going to just publish this. I'm going to say uh, started adding list of known playography. And I'm going to watch this page. And there we are. So that's as easy as that is. You can see it's very simple. Um, adding, um, sometimes you'll notice um, on some um, actors and actresses, actually people will use a table um, rather than a bullet point list. And quite often you'll see a table if you are stating perhaps maybe the, um, the part that they played. So you want maybe that to be sortable. So you might put the playography in and have one of the, the, the table, um, one part of the table, you know, say the, the, the date that it aired, the date that it was released, and then you could make it a sortable table that way. And we're going to head back to the article that we looked at yesterday, which is the article on Frank Peard, uh, who was a badminton player. And what's quite usual, if we take a look at uh, Judy Devlin, who's actually uh, Frank Peard's sister-in-law, uh, who's also a very well-respected badminton player, uh, it's quite usual for there to be a table, you know, if somebody won multiple titles um, for a table to appear. So you can see she was a very successful uh, badminton player. So it's quite a long, quite a long table. Um, and if we look at the article on Frank appeared in German, um, which is showing in English at the moment, um, you can see there is, we have we have all the information for us, so we can start maybe populating that now. So I have added my new section, which is achievements, and I'm taking that from Judy's article. The section is called achievements, and I'm going to take the structure from, from hers as well. So I want to add a table. Um, so we go back to our, our insert button here, which is beside um, the bullet points, so from site to over. So if we press uh, insert, and it's the same button that we use when we want to insert uh, images or uh, templates on info box, but here I want to insert a table. Um, so it starts with kind of a default size of four by four. And I want to start typing in. So I have here, I can tab over. Uh, permit, event, and winner. And I want to start adding information here. So I'm going to take the first three. So we have 1948. Ooh, down button does not work. It's good to know. 1949. I'm going to again. I think. I know that one. So the first three are. So now. So we have Scottish Open, Irish Open. I'll copy that. And what we can actually do is start linking some of these. So we have Scottish Open. That's badminton. And you're, we're only going to link the first time it appears in the table. We're not going to link it every single time. Um, and we have Irish Open, Badminton. Now, what event was it? And this is where 
Um, so we very quickly looked at the wiki data item. So if you want to look at the wiki data item of um, of any article on Wikipedia, it will have a wiki data item associated with it. You can see it's here in tools. We have our wiki data item. And if we click on that, I have it open here. Uh, so wiki data is um, a centralized database um, giving every single object that's in it within, within it um, and a unique identifier, which is referred to as a queue number. So um, we're now up to quite quite a large number. I actually can't remember how many objects. There's quite a number of objects in, in the Wikidata uh, database now and started going into um, lexemes and things like that as well. Um, but for Frank, you can see he's been here for a while. He's quite a relatively no number uh, within Wikidata. And you can see we have all of the information related to Frank as a person uh, and as, it re as he relates to other things within the database. So that goes down to a very um, uh, macro level, which is that he's a human, that he's male, um, what country he was a citizen of, um, and most importantly, we have kind of uh, information around death dates, birth dates, his relation to other people within the database. So we can see we have a spouse here, which is Susan Devlin. Um, we know his occupation, that he was a badminton player, and that he was a participant in um, all of these uh, so we have all of the information that we'll probably want. The idea behind Wikidata is that, as we saw yesterday, um, it creates links between Wikipedias. So we now know that Frank Peart has a Wikipedia article both on German and in English. Um, but equally, if there was lots of photographs available um, of Frank Peart um, uh, you know, under an open license, uh, we would be able to add um, a Commons category. Uh, so where all the images tagged as being of Frank Peard, we could link to that as well. Um, if he had any books that were in the public domain, that were on Wikisource, for example, uh, we could add a link to that. Um, so it means that there's kind of a central point at which all information relating to or having a connection with Frank Peard are connected to. Um, the Wikidata database is um, queryable. Um, I'm not in any way going to pretend that <laughs> I have any skills when it comes to querying Wikidata. Um, at the moment, there's quite a number of people who are conducting um, live streams, uh, but also Q&As and help desks on how to query um, Wikidata. It's a Sparkle query database. Um, I know some very rudimentary ways of querying it, but nothing beyond kind of the very trivial. So I'm not going to embarrass myself um, by attempting to uh, by attempting to pretend that I know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. Um, but I'm going to take some of the information that's listed here. Um, so we know that we have uh, men's doubles. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be very cheek, cheeky and translate this once again. Yes, yeah, so men's doubles are the first three. And E1 alongside the people. So the names are gonna not be too garbled. I'm pretty sure Noel does not have an article on on English. Ooh. And we'll do this one. Now so we've obviously reached the end of um I suppose the allotted um table that is automatically generated for you, but much like uh, most softwares uh, that involve tables, just click on these little arrows here. So if I wanted to create a new column, um, I can add one in. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I can delete column, don't want to delete the whole thing. Um, equally, if I want to start adding more cells, so insert below, so I can start adding lots more. We can also merge cells, so if I click a few of them, I can merge it. Um, so if you have a title, it goes over um, a few. Um, will it allow me to unmerge? I imagine it will, yep. Um, so say if I, we were talking about things being sortable. So I'm going to see if I can figure that out in Visual Editor rather than Source. So I'm going to say Properties, so you can see sortable. Um, 
can be added here so that this becomes a tab for which you know the information can be sorted from the top um, what you could also do is make it um, uh, collapsible so that when somebody initially goes to the page um, we can make the, uh, the so that the table is automatically collapsed and that's quite useful if it's um, a very uh, long table like the one here in Judy's um, article and um, because I mean if there was content like there is in Frank's one I mean it might be an argument for moving um, this section above uh, this table um, but that if it's an exceptionally long table then perhaps collapsing it is a good idea and um, so that it's it's less intrusive you also have um, so there's collapsible in that the reader can choose to make it collapsible it's also collapsed initially which means when you first go to the page the table is by default collapsed so it's not taking up a large part of the part of the article I'm going to turn those off I think Let's say apply changes and I'm going to add a few more while we're here uh, so we have 1949. Now, ideally, I would sit down and do the entire thing and not um, leave it as incomplete. But what I might do is I'll do it later. Just between you and me. More than likely, nobody else is going to be um, looking at this. So, Ireland Individual Championships. Okay, so it's Irish Badminton Championships. This could probably be the national. Um, I think the one chips is where I can't spell, which is always good. Uh, so we have men's singles. Somebody said to me recently that they would just potentially stream somebody just kind of quietly editing away um, I don't know if I want yeah I've noticed that I've put in an erroneous probably capitalization and I know whether people would be particularly interested in listening to me argue with myself about my edits or frown probably continuously at all the mistakes that I'm making or things that I'm trying to unfurl and um, yeah have I managed to add myself I have so for the moment I'm just going to take this one doubles himself whoop yeah so quite happy with that it means that I can um so if I publish this so I'm going to say um, started table of periods uh, winning record sounds good so we're going to say publish changes so now we can see we can sort we have our button here and so it's turned it upside down straight to the other way around um, Scottish Open it's going to put it alphabetically, put it back. Um, so it means that if somebody, as a reader, if you're interested in looking at, okay, I'm just interested in where he's won as part of a men's doubles team, um, I'm getting them all here equally, it'll um, probably, yes, yeah, so it's going alphabetically by the first first letter as it appears in, in that. Um, so it's not intelligently, say, putting the surnames together. Um, so it's quite, I suppose it's raw um, sorting in that way. Um, but you can start to see that it, it you know, it's adding quality information, uh, interesting information to an article. Um, and if you think about, it, I suppose, the types of ways of people are going to be searching for information, um, you know, you're either, you're sneakily at a pub quiz. And uh, one of the questions is which, you know, Irish badminton player won 12, you know, Irish Opens or whatever it was uh, through the, the 40s and 50s. Um, this is the kind of information that you're obviously going to be zoning in on. You're like, you know, 
you look them up and you're interested in how many times you played in certain tournaments it means you can clump the information together and you can you can interrogate it quite quickly um and that's one of the utilities also of wiki data and having this information here is that yes this is quite intelligent for a human uh to read this is how an individual is probably going to want to look at this information but how is a database or a human that wants lots of information perhaps drawn through a query um, of all of the Irish biographies or all of the Irish people who have been, you know, who have an association with the Irish Open between particular date stamps, um, between 1940 and 1960, that kind of thing. Uh, and also that this information is um, closer to machine readable um, than scraping data, which was the traditional, there were, um, DBPD, which is still going, was a way of scraping data from Wikipedia articles to transmute it then into a, a source like this. And how they did it was that they um, took information from, from these info boxes. We have a few minutes, so I'm probably going to explore info boxes with you a little bit now. I think we did look at it quite briefly uh, when we were looking at, at destubbing some articles. And I don't think, no, no, Maureen has one. May Craig does not. Okay, so that's going to be a simple thing to do. So again, we're going to go into edit source. So if we were to look at this um, in source code, so go back to Maureen for a minute and look at it in source code, if you're more comfortable with that. You can see one of the first things that turns up is the code for the info box. Um, and this is the uh, wiki markup that will generate an info box for you. Uh, there are info boxes for all manner of things, for places, institutions, buildings. Um, there was also traditionally info boxes for all sorts of types of persons. So there is an info box for artists. Uh, an awful lot of these are starting to be kind of drawn together and merged. Um, so that they're kind of, that there is kind of just info box person. And then there's different fields that you can draw into it rather than having to have specialised info boxes for each profession or, or, you know, kind of segment of society, that kind of thing. Um, but if we look at, so you can see here in the source code, it's the first thing that turns up. So, so just before the opening line, the info box, that's where the info box lives. And that's true for um, our visual editor as well. So just before my lead line, I'm going to say insert. And we're going to templates. Um, info boxes live in templates. Um, and you can see this is the title that I'm looking for. So this is the template that I want. I want info box person. Uh, so if you're looking at an info box, so if you're looking at an artist and you say, okay, that's the one that I want, you could always always go into source, copy and paste it, and paste it in here. Oh, no. <laughs> also help if I actually copy and paste it. So info box. So you can see we're starting to get all of the types of info boxes that we have. So these are probably, I suppose, the most used ones. Um, so you can see there's one for settlement, um, musical artist, building, um, organisation, school. So I'm going to pick person. And you just start off at the top with just, okay, what is the name of the person that we're dealing with here? It's May Craig. And this is where I want to add more information. So what are the kind of fields that are turning up, say, in Maureen? So Maureen's also an actress. Makes sense that this article would mimic um, what is turning up. So um, I want born. Uh, birth date, actually, is what that's going to be called. Uh, and I have 1889, and then I want death. So we have death date, so we have 1972. What else do we have? So we, we probably don't, do we have place of birth and place of death? Maybe not. So I'm going to insert this for the moment. And you can see that's quite scant. There's not a huge amount uh, going on there. And we're going to see, um, so we have, we can add occupation. say actress. Always helps when you spell things correctly. Yeah. So we've added that. I don't know if we have a place of birth and a place of death. Doesn't look like we do. Okay, so she died in Dublin. So we'll add that. So if I go back to again add more information. I put in we'll get death place. And we'll say Dublin. So within um info boxes, so even though we're in uh, source editor and you know we're kind of adding um, these elements in in plain text if you want to say add a link to Dublin you are going to need to use the wiki markup which is the double the double square brackets um, to link to Dublin uh, there is you can see this 
jiggery pokery, uh, we put it that way, um, for calculating um, date of death. And if we look again at our wiki source, so this guy, there's no, there's no visual editor cheat for this, unfortunately. You do just have to look up the code. Um, and it's something that I always forget from one time to the next, so I tend to copy and paste it from another, uh, another biography like this one. And you can see it's um, death, date, and age, and it's you put the information in reverse, and it calculates, it gives you that um, display of um, age at, at time of death. So it's age 81, it jo and generates that for you. You don't type that in. So if I want to add that, so we're going to change this so that it reflects the information on May Gray. So she died in 1972, in February, on the 8th. Now we only have a, a year of birth at the moment. Um, I could probably find it. Well, she says. Uh, we may be able to find it if we were going, going uh, doing a bit of research. But It'll work if you just have, it should work if you just have the year and what you'll get is an age range. So we apply that and you can see it's generated for me age 82 or 83 because we don't know at what point during 1889 she was born. So it's giving us an age range there. If we had a photograph of May Craig, um, we would be able to add it equally for, for Maureen Toll. Um, we go back into our template, go down to add more information and, and put in, see image is one of the ones that's being suggested to me. You can see there's 85 fields you can possibly add. Um, so if we had a birth name for May Craig, which is it's quite common with actresses that they might, um, actors or actresses that they change their name. Um, you know, it, it, you can get very granular. You can see how um, there are very specific um, fields for very specific types of biography. So you can see disappeared dates, so for missing people, um, death cause, where the body was discovered for, for victims, um, resting place, um, resting place coordinates, which sometimes if um, you know the graveyard or, or um, cemetery in which somebody, you might be able to ascertain the exact coordinates of their memorial, um, whether or not they um, have any monuments, um, nationality, you can see other names, so if there's stage names or if their name changed, if they have different spellings. Um, again, this helps with findability. And that's the kind of information that, say, we take a quick look at Frank Peard for a moment as a wiki data item. Um, you can see that he has kind of a, uh, an also known as, his full given name is Francis Woodley Peard. Uh, and what we can actually add to here is he's also quite often known as Frank W. Peard. So I can add that in. Um, as another alias and I just press enter. It should save that for me. And we can see here, so we have Frank Peard, it's kind of the main, it's the, the name associated with the QI number, um, but you can see his aliases or what he's also known as is turning up here. Uh, another thing that we could add, okay, thank you. Um, we can add that he was in fact an Irish badminton player. I am logged in, I don't know why it continuously shows me that. Um, if you are interested in doing small amounts of translation work, and uh, in the next fortnight I'm going to look at, we're going to, I'm going to show you how you start going about, um, if you're interested in translation work, so how you might go about translating from one language to another, um, and I'm going to make a, a valiant attempt to do a little bit of Irish, um, probably in a fortnight's time when I have a bit more brain space. <laughs> it's a big report that I have to write. Um, but if you're interested in doing small amounts of Irish or other language translation, Wikidata is a really interesting place to do it. So you can see here, um, so we can click on all entered languages, it's probably just going to be in. So these are all the potential languages that Wikidata can support. So these are all um, languages for which there is a Wikipedia, basically. So you can see it goes on for quite some time right down to Zulu. Um, so you can so show fewer. So at the moment, based on who I'm logged in as and the Wikipedias that I have trans that I have um, made edits to, it is showing me some kind of preference languages. So I've made very small edits to French and Irish Wikipedia, so it's showing me those kind of as default. And um, so if you were to start interacting with these languages, it'll start showing them as your your preference languages, as it were. Um, so you can see we have Imar um, Badminton, Jared Badminton Irlandaise. So um, if this didn't, if this didn't exist, for that, so if we take a look at Maureen Toll's Wikidata item, 
You can see Bon Extra Arianuk um, shows up there, which is quite nice in Irish. Where are we? Here we go. So you can see she has quite a number um, of, of languages to which um, both her name obviously doesn't actually change in other languages, but the descriptor text has been translated. Um, so if you're interested in doing kind of just, as I mentioned, kind of little edits, um, it's quite useful. So equally you could do it for places. So if we go to, she was from Fairview. So if we go to the wiki data item on Fairview. Um, excellent, we have, I think this is the most Irish translations I've seen <laughs> in succession. Um, so we have, where are we? Um, so that it is a, a, a place of people. Um, on a Dimra, Egon de Bolly of So it's it's um it's a settlement, it's a it's a human settlement in County Dublin. So bouncing around on wiki data, um, adding translations this way, you're not making the commitment of perhaps having to edit an entire article. Um and if you are interested in say just adding, you could go around just looking at um Go out of this for a moment. I'm going to save this. Let's say added as an info box. If we go to her wiki data item for a second, so she, so actress here, so we don't have Irish actress put in and it doesn't exist for. So, what I'm going to do actually, seeing as I have the translation to hand and hoping that it is. A good translation. So banished banished or Aranok. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to edit. And I'm going to add new. Is it going to show me? This is where sometimes Sometimes I've noticed it doesn't always want to show me Irish for some reason when I'm actually editing. And that is one of these times. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, we're going to return to that once I have figured out. I think, actually, if I make this display to me, this is quite interesting. So Wikidata itself is, um, I suppose, it's multilingual. So all you need to do is just tell it what language you want it to display it to you and it'll show you the platform. Now, you can see not everything has translated into Irish, but the majority of it has. Uh, so I have my read, um, look at the history, uh, the discussion pages of play and alt is the article that I'm looking at. So Curran Ager is edited in Irish. Um, There we go. Okay, so she actually doesn't she doesn't have anything input in Irish. So we're gonna say May Craig. And now if we knew if she was known by an Irish name, um we could add that in there as well. But I'm just gonna say publish or Aaronok. I'm gonna say publish. And there we go. So if we go back to English temporarily, you can see we go back and then we have we have Banish or Aaronok coming up. There does seem to be a bit of a glitch at the moment. So if you are, if you go into edit and suddenly Irish disappears on you, it's in now. Like it's not turning up as an option to add as a language. And if you are interested in um, adding um, Irish and, and indeed just editing purely through through Irish um, or any other language, um, obviously having this displaying in Irish is, is preferable um, to looking at it. So you can see we have so for everything for which there is um, a known translated term, um, so we can see Bolly is turning up here. She was um, an actress and a film actress. It's turning up. Uh, she doesn't actually at the moment have an article on um, on Wikipedia, on the Irish language Wikipedia. And that's something we'll be going to be looking at in the next two weeks, um, depending on my uh, courage. <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> so on that note, oh, yes, there are Wikidata info boxes, it's true. Um, we're just having a kind of uh, conversation going on in the chat. I don't habitually use them on English language Wikipedia, um, and there are a number of editors, so 
there is the ability to add info boxes through Wikidata, uh, and that means that you don't have to um, laboriously manually populate it in the way that I was doing there with BigQuery, you know, finding the the um, field that you want to fill and then filling it manually. There is some friction with Wikidata on English language Wikipedia, and um, it's not always, not that it isn't accepted entirely, but um, there does seem to be a preference, and particularly when we're talking about specific wiki projects, some wiki projects have decided within the articles that fall into their remit, so in particular with music, they have very particular ways in which they format. Um, and I think there's some wiki projects that traditionally actually didn't like info boxes at all, um, so would habitually actually remove them. Um, I think those are kind of slowly disappearing as things kind of become a little bit more standardised. Um, we can look at, I can certainly, you know, Wikidata is going to feature over and over again in these in these tutorials. So definitely I can show you how Wikidata info boxes work. And specifically, if we dip back into commons, um, we can look at how categories on commons start to interact with Wikidata items and how information is drawn in from different sources. So that's probably going to be um, a really interesting way of looking at that, at that. And especially as in Ireland, we're going to be looking at uh, running particular photo competitions, actually having some of those Wikidata items talking to categories on commons is something that it's work that I can definitely show you how it's done um, and we'll have uh, quite a good outcome in that, that is work that needs to be done anyway. <laughs> Yes, hopefully someday there'll be info boxes everywhere. Um, it certainly makes life a whole lot easier. It also means that for uh, minority language Wikipedias or for Wikipedias for which there's smaller amounts of editors, um, if the Wikidata item gets updated, then the Wikidata info box in a particular article automatically gets updated. You're not waiting for an individual editor to go in. So if somebody passes away or, um, gets married or equally if it's a place and the population changes or if it's a band and they release a new album you're not waiting for an editor to come along and to add that information manually it's going to appear automatically through the info box powered by Wikidata so there are huge benefits uh, specifically for um, perhaps smaller language Wikipedias for Wikidata because it, it just lessens the load um, for editors to do those kind of very small manual updates. But we're going to leave it at that uh, for today and I'll be back on Monday um, starting to look maybe a little bit more at those um, those types of info boxes and uh, some more of that functionality that Wikidata can lend. Um, but until then, have a fantastic weekend uh, and I hope to talk to you all again soon. Bye!